Just for a minute. You have no rivals. Pastor Anna, just you on the piano. Sing that. Hallelujah. have a need in here tonight, just raise your hand. Wave it at me so I can see you. Pray for me, Pastor. Hallelujah. If you waved your hand at me, just raise your hands right now. Just begin to worship right now. There's no other name that's going to do this. But just the name of Jesus. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is yes. the name above. Yes. There it is. There's that glory. Come on, become a door opener today. Be the usher. Be the doorkeeper. Come on, open that thing up. be a doorkeeper. not interested in your success. He's interested in your surrender. Father, I come to you with nothing. Because without you, I am not anything. I am only successful because of the work that is in me. So I surrender myself. To you. Hallelujah. One more time all over this place. Give him a crazy shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the house of God. Hallelujah. My goodness. Anybody else feel that tonight? Praise the Lamb of God. It's amazing when you get a bunch of people in a room and you start worshiping what happens. 
Amen. Things begin to change. You know, if you got a problem, you got something going on, you start thinking about God and his goodness. You even start thinking about what, where you came from. Amen. And what he did for you. What he pulled you out of. It won't take you long. And you'll forget about where you're at. And you'll know who you are. <laughs> there's, there's a difference between who you are and whose you are. Look at your neighbor and say, I know whose I am. <laughs> See, because a lot of people want to know your name. They want to know your status. They want to know all these things. If you want to know somebody, you, you ask them, hey, what do you do for a living? And then in your mind, you start making an assumption of what you think that they are just because of what they do for a living. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So as you begin to get to talk to them, you get to talking to some people, and, and, and when they tell you what they do, and then you begin to talk to them, you realize that they are much more than what their job defines them. And so here's the thing about us is we begin to serve God. You know, you can come to church every time the doors are open, but if you're not getting it in there, when it comes time for you to go out into the world and people start talking to you about problems or they start talking to you about things and if there is no Bible solution to it see see, listen you, you don't need a pulpit and a title to preach matter of fact what you just need to do is yield to the gift that's inside of you God has given us the ability the ability to reach everybody in any place that they are in by his word. We're on a series, and it's called No More Limits. Now, ain't you glad that you're not limited? Anybody have a smartphone? Dumb phones, I call them dumb phones. You get to a certain, certain point in your internet or your data and they limit you and it's not that you can't get it but they slow everything down they they have a deal that they start slowing everything down and you can still pick it up but it's just like you're just thinking man come on and so in certain places or certain times if you go over they limit you and a lot of times this is what people they they think about God Okay. They have this opinion of God that God is going to do only what our minds will allow him to do. And that's 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 kind of a good reasoning there because if you come to God with limits, he's going to meet you on the limits that you're limiting him with. Everybody say amen. If you're limiting God in your prayers, then he's going to answer the prayers that you have limited him with. Now, he is, but unto him who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we shall ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Not in him. In us. So according to the power that works in us is what he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all what you shall ask or think. Now you can ask and you can think at the same time. Did you know that? Some of you don't think it's possible, Mike Coulter, but you can. You can do two things at once. But can you imagine there are things that you're thinking that you want God to do that you haven't uttered to nobody but God knows those thoughts? And then you got to ask yourself, well, God, if I'm thinking this thing, why ain't you moving this thing? And he said, well, you got the power. You have the power to move things because our faith moves us. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. How many believe that? That's the word of God. I don't care if you believe it or not. It's the truth. We walk by faith and not by sight. And for years we have said that doubt is the opposite of faith. But it's not the opposite of faith because doubt is actually a sin. Uh-oh. 
Because when we know God and then to doubt God, we have turned.